Today we're down in the big city and I found a nice apple tree or some sort of fruit tree that we're going to paint. Spring has most definitely arrived. Some trees already have some, some white blooms on them, but I'm waiting for these apple trees to really come into full bloom. It's going to be really pretty. I really enjoy coming into town and doing more urban scenes. I don't do it enough because I'm just, I'm in love so much with the wild landscape that is in this area. But I really like this scene a lot. I'm really excited for when this fruit tree is gonna bloom. It's probably gonna have some nice white blossoms. We'll probably come back and do a nice big painting. But for now, we're just gonna do a 12 by 16. Uh, keep it pretty fresh, do it pretty quickly. Let's get going. So today I'm actually going to do the voiceover in the studio, so I'm playing back this video and watching it. And uh, here I'm just trying to get a feel for placement, where everything's going, tops of the roofs, trying to make sure my perspective is correct, uh, looking at the side of the house. And I'm using just a, a wet brown mix. It's uh, probably burnt umber, some alizarin crimson, and here I'm just trying to follow the shape of the tree just give it that gesture of a fruit tree but I'm realizing that I'm not getting what I want and so that everything was too big I wasn't getting the top of the tree where I wanted it so no no problem I just wiped it down and I started back I moved the trees down just you know an inch and a half maybe two and that was gonna be the placement I liked much better so I start out with the shadow color and then go right with the grass next to that, kind of hinting at some of the shadow of the tree right there. And then into the, the roof color, the shadow color on the houses, and then with a nice pop of light on the, the bright side of the house. And with this, I decided to go with painting the house first and then bringing that fruit tree over the top of it. If I were to paint this scene again, which I might, I may change it up, may paint the, the tree first and then kind of hint at the house back behind it. And then quickly just suggesting that fence there. And then straight over wet into wet paint with my tree. I kind of turned the brush around there. You can see some scratches. I just kind of scratched out trying to trying to kind of highlight some of the, the light side without having to paint it at the moment. And then hinting at kind of the wildness that happens with this tree. And there's no blooms yet, so this is a lot of just green, green spots, green hints in the in the tree. There's a sidewalk right here that I kind of halfway suggested, and I kind of was going back and forth on whether I should keep that sidewalk in there and going for the nice pop of light in the grass that I hadn't quite captured in that first go. suggesting this shape of the tree back here. And here you see I'm putting in something, taking it away. And it's kind of my process in painting. It's push and pull and push and pull, going back and forth. And here I come in with some light sides where the, the light's hitting that side of the tree. And then just adjusting that shadow and my my light had changed quite a bit so I was kind of guessing at that shadow and uh, trying to just get something that that felt kind of natural you can see I keep keep playing with that area trying to find something that would feel a little more natural I'm just adding some interest to the trees uh, and you'll see I do this several times just paint right over those those little branches of the fruit tree and then I'll come back into it with the sky, I'll go back into it with branches.
All right, so it's the next day. It's day two, and I've got good news and bad news. The good news is that we're back to paint a second session. I'm really not happy with the painting. It's just too... It's a little too overly simplified, and if you've watched my other videos, I want to try to grab some of that craziness that's happening in nature, and that's what's happening in this apple tree. And I'm not getting that in my painting, so I'm excited to keep working on it. And the bad news is that yesterday I did what I always do. I put the painting in the back of my car, but as you know, last week I went to the river with the kids. There's sand all over the back of the car. I drove home with the windows down, and I totally sandblasted my painting. But what I'm not going to do is to try to get every grain of sand out of there. It's just not going to happen. Some of these areas that were thinner and these darker colors, the shadows, they're a little dry so I can kind of get some of that sand off of there. But in the lighter areas that are still wet, it's not coming out. And so I'm, I might scrape some of it, but really I'm just going to paint it as if the sand wasn't even there. I'm just going to totally ignore it, and uh, we'll see what happens. So I started out my second session with just firming up some of the dark side, trying to find a little more order, uh, and then I'm going to build it back up with chaos. And it's kind of my whole, my whole approach in painting is, is trying to balance control and chaos. And so here, going with the dark of the tree is a little more control, and then look, chaos. I do this a lot with kind of a wet, um, a wet mixture and a thin, a small synthetic brush, and just hint at a lot of the craziness craziness that's going on in there bringing back a little more pop in the the green of the of that spring color in that tree I'm just kind of playing with developing different parts of the painting I felt like I could really use some cool colors and so I I really blued made those shadows go a little more blue and then I, I hinted, and then I pushed it back just a little bit. It was a little too blue. But that idea I then carried down into that shadow made it a little cooler as well. And still just trying to find interest in the sky, take out some of those branches, putting them back in. Trying to work towards grabbing that rawness like I was talking about in that tree. And then just kind of working around the painting, finding little elements, little details that might help this thing come together. And it's a big part of painting, which I would encourage everyone, is to allow yourself to explore different things. Uh, allow yourself to try painting in a way that may not feel natural to you, like painting the houses completely and then a tree over the top of it. But then not saying that that's the only way it can be done. The next time, try it a different way. And I, I do that a lot in my work, is not try to treat everything the exact same way every time you paint, but to keep it loose and to keep it flexible and allow yourself to try different things. And allow yourself to try to address issues in different ways. And at this point in the painting, really the whole structure is there. The, the values, the drawing, it looks like an apple tree in front of a lit house. I'm happy about that. But I'm going back in and I'm just looking for the little details and the little elements to kind of to pull the whole scene together to make it feel believable. And even though it's in this you know, loose, impressionistic style, I want to hint at enough elements of reality for it to feel like uh, you know, not some imaginary made up scene, but to feel like a real scene that I stood there and observed in person.
And we're back here in my fancy garage studio. It's funny because just a couple of years ago, I would see artists post in their studio and I would look and I could tell it was in their garage and I thought, ah, they're not a real artist. And then I moved into a house with a two car garage and I thought that is way better than the third bedroom. I even think it's better than having to go to town to like a different studio space. So I'm sorry to all of you that I judged negatively for your garage studio space. A garage studio is awesome. I'm happy we got to go out, put another session in on this painting. However, I'm still not, I'm not thrilled with the painting. As I was standing there today, kind of trying to figure out why I wasn't so happy with it, I think that if I made the composition a little wider, uh, there was like the garage on the left side, there's like a basketball goal. I think I could make it a little wider, add some of the front of the house, give it a few more interesting elements. I think that could help a lot. So as that apple tree blooms, Maybe I'll go back, I'll do a bigger painting, and I'll widen it out a little bit. I think that could help a lot. And today I'm going to do the monthly giveaway. If you're new to this channel, every month I pick a winner for a little painting giveaway. It'll be this painting this month. And it's to people that are signed up on my newsletter from my website. There's a link below if you want to check it out. But this is really just a way of me saying thank you to the folks that are on my newsletter list because you guys continue to support me unbelievably. You're still buying paintings. You're still uh, getting commissions. So thank you. And uh, the least I can do is do a little drawing once a month for a small painting. This painting I actually did on the YouTube channel. I'll put a little link up here. You can check out the video, and the winner for this month is Colin Peel. Colin Peel, this little painting is yours. Just send me an email, and I'll send it your way. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys are enjoying these videos. My goal is to put out a video every week. I'm shooting for Thursdays. So if you're enjoying these videos, please subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you next week.